Hello, my name is Margaret Rifkin. I'm an at-large member of the board of APA's National Capital Chapter. Welcome to Largo Wayfinding Branding and Placemaking Strategy with Jonathan Green, Adam Dodgson, and Aaron Garnis Holmes from the Prince George's County Planning Department. Jonathan is a recent graduate of Morgan State University School of Architecture and Planning and is currently working on his master's degree in planning at Georgetown University. Jonathan and his co-presenters, Adam and Aaron, are work together at Prince George's County Planning Department. Adam Dodgson is a place, is the placemaking section supervisor there. And his background is in English planning, which he has been doing for over 25 years. Aaron Garnis is, as I said, he works with his co-presenters at the Prince George's County Planning Department, and his background is in landscape architecture. This session was pre-recorded before the start of the live virtual conference and is made available for everyone to view on demand during or after the chapter conference that runs from November 15th to 17th, 2021. Planners may claim 0.25 CM credits for viewing this session. Now I'll hand it over to Jonathan Green to start the session. Thank you so much, Margaret, and hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I would like to reintroduce uh, members of my team. Again, my name is Jonathan Green. I'm a senior planner with the Prince George's County Planning Department, and I'm also serving as a project manager on behalf of the, the department. With me here today are Deputy Project Director Aaron Garnis holmes and Project Facilitator Adam Dodgson. This consultant driven project is led by tool design group with support from JMD Wayfinding, Place Design, and Aceto Consulting. So a little bit about our session today, we're going to start off with the project background um, and the ordinance of how we got to the strategy, followed by our outreach plan. Uh, this is especially important as most of this project has been conducted during the COVID-19 pandemic. We will follow up with an explanation of the three elements and some of our recommendations for the strategy and transforming Largo Town Center into a premier downtown. And we'll also conclude with future coordination and next steps for the project. So I'll kick off the project background. Like many of our projects in Prince George's County, this project came out of recommendations from Plan 2035, the approved general plan for Prince George's County. Plan 2035 identifies Largo Town Center as one of its three premier downtown areas. The downtowns are best positioned for future mixed use development because of their existing transit systems and their walkability. This provides great for prime locations in the area, as well as any new development that may be coming around. The visions of downtown Largo that are laid out in Plan 2035 are further supplemented by the 2013 Largo Town Center Sector Plan, which essentially calls out recommendations for a mixed-use mix retail center around the metro station that's in Largo. The, the metro station core, as we like to refer to it, is the perfect hub for multimodal transportation systems. Um, and it'll be supported by a primary civic center and mixed use to infill development, both now and in the future, that will also support the rest of the area. Uh, the Urban Land Institute also did a study in 2015 that recognized Largo's potential to serve as a center of government for Prince George's County. And all the plans basically alluded that to get to the idea of this downtown Largo, we need to focus on wayfinding, branding, and placemaking, which are our core elements for the strategy. So in 2020, the Prince George's County Planning Department 
uh, kicked off the Largo Town Center wayfinding, branding, and placemaking strategy to further examine those three elements I just mentioned and their impact on transforming Largo Town Center. The wayfinding piece looks at how people navigate to, from, and within the Largo Town Center area, as well as its nearby destinations. The branding piece really chimes in on examining how we create the identity of Largo uh, in comparison to nearby places like Woodmore Town Center, National Harbor, and how do we put it on this stage with the rest of the destinations throughout the county. And the final piece, placemaking, will look into how we utilize the public spaces in the public realm in Largo. And we want to create these spaces for people to gather and engage with each other. So just to look at our project boundary, it pretty much follows the, the boundary set forth in the 2013 sector plan, uh, which is a pretty robust area that includes the Largo Town Center Metro Station, the new University of Maryland Capital Region Medical Center, as well as the Wayne K. Curry Administration Building, which is now home to the county executive offices and the district council offices. But it also connects to other nearby destinations, as, such as the Prince George's Sports and Learning Complex, which is a multi-purpose recreational facility owned by the commission, uh, as well as FedEx Field, home to the Washington football team. Uh, these all also connect down to Morgan Boulevard Metro Station, which is the station right before Largo Town Center. Together with two other stations, Morgan Boulevard and Largo make up the Blue Line Corridor. So uh, we want to touch a little bit about our outreach in the midst of COVID. So during the pandemic, we had to reinvent and re-envision how we did our outreach. We were able to do a social distance walking tour with our area council member, which gave us plenty of feedback on some of the new ideas and development that he envisioned coming to Largo, especially since he's a longtime resident of the area. Uh, we also utilized virtual focus groups with both key stakeholders on an agency level as well as a neighborhood level. We wanted to make sure that everyone's priorities were heard, even if we couldn't meet face to face. We also boasted a large social media campaign that focused on posts that weren't just technical, but also engaged people's minds and their emotions and their thoughts about Largo Town Center, uh, which were reflected in the responses and feedback we got from the public. We also engaged them via online surveys, as well as virtual community meetings to continue the feedback loops and allow the project team to relay our thoughts and recommendations to the public. To get back to one of our key tools for outreach, uh, social media was big during this time. On the screen, you can see some of our postings on Facebook, uh, Eventbrite, Instagram. We were everywhere, essentially. Um, and this was really important because we couldn't meet face to face at this time. Um, but our outreach was reflective in the responses we got back. Most of our posts ended up being reached by at least 200 users and our YouTube videos that showcase our meetings, both focus groups and main community meetings have been viewed over a thousand times. And so putting the effort into really reaching the people showed off and especially using SurveyMonkey and Slido as tools to reach them, pay dividends and developing the recommendations, which I now will hand over to Deputy Project Manager Aaron Garnes Holmes, who will walk you through wayfinding the first element. Thanks, Jonathan. So my name is Aaron, and wayfinding was the first of the three major elements of this strategy. And wayfinding is largely about providing the right information in the right location at the right time to the right people who are trying to find their way from one destination to another. Um, so this information, you know, can be directional signage or uh, maps that are placed at welcome points, arrival points, decision points between two different paths. But in order to begin developing a strategy of, of where that kind of information would go, we start first by considering the spectrum of users in a place. And we've used this uh, conceptual framework here where we separate out um, different ways that people are traveling through 
uh, a place or a space like Largo and how much information they need based on that. So this grid uh, separates out different users by both speed at which they're traveling and their familiarity with the location. So on the left side of this quadrant, we have um, novices who are not very familiar with the area. And so they're gonna need a little bit more information, a little bit more direction to help them figure out how to get somewhere, where to go, what's the best way to get from A to B, or maybe more background information about the destination. Um, on the right, we have experts who know the area, they've traveled through here before, they don't need background information, they really just need enough information to help sort of fill the gaps in, in what they know of how to get, how to get around. Then from top to bottom, um, we have the difference in speed. So uh, striders are people who are traveling fast. Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be a pedestrian. This could even be someone in a car, someone who knows uh, where they're going. They just need the, the bare minimum information, maybe very uh, digestible and quickly so that they can insert that into uh, their routine to figure out how to get through the space. Whereas the strollers moving more slowly on the, on the bottom um, have more time to absorb information. They can absorb larger uh, bits of information. They can stop and maybe read a sign because they aren't just um, trying to get as quickly as possible from A to B. So this framework helps us consider what kind, what size, what complexity of information will need to be placed in different areas around the study area to improve wayfinding. So in order to, to start thinking about that, we first um, listened to the community who identified uh, several different key destinations within the study area. And then we began to analyze them or categorize them, starting with regional destinations that um, like FedEx field or you know, the hospital that may need wayfinding markers up to you know, one, two or more miles away. People are coming to these destinations from outside of this area and um, are going to be looking for indicators that they're heading in the right direction um, from pretty far outside of the study area. Then next, we consider area destinations that maybe um, people are still seeking out to get to, like the Largo Town Center Shopping Center or um, the Sports and Learning Complex, but they will probably be looking for directional signage within the built environment um, closer by, so within maybe a half mile um, radius from the location, not necessarily from outside the study area. And then we consider local destinations, places like schools or parks that um, don't need directions from far away, but maybe require some sort of indicator that you've arrived and you know which park you're at. Um, and this is sort of a, again, a conceptual framework. This isn't a comprehensive list of all the de um, destinations here on the slide, but it helps us um, start considering what kind of wayfinding elements will be needed and where, so that uh, when we actually look at uh, potential designs for signs um, on a potential sample journey from the metro station to FedEx Field, um, we can start to think about where the larger, you know, destination indicators like that Largo monument sign on the left maybe goes at major intersections or at an arrival to a major destination versus the smaller signs might be sparsed out along the way, or the, uh, the maps may be at places where pedestrians would stop and wonder, you know, an intersection where they need to turn right or left. Um, and so this is an example of how the strategy is starting to help us figure out which of these um, different wayfinding elements will go where. And of course, um, it's not just about providing directions. This is also about helping to start to brand the area. So the design of those signs and other elements um, is part of an overall sort of branding strategy, the major goals of which are to connect people to downtown Largo, both literally connect them to the place with directions, but also connect them to the idea of downtown Largo, um, and to differentiate that idea of downtown Largo from other districts, other destinations, other places in the county or the region, and to um, support the community development and the real estate development that starts to build the wealth and value that also um, ultimately builds the brand. With the outcome being of the strategy that will develop um, themes and logos and slogans that capture the essence of a place and can support those wayfinding strategies, 
that can also start to inform art and design features like sculptures and murals um, or uh, the design of street furniture like benches, trash receptacles, et cetera. So during our community engagement, um, this idea of a living Largo slogan came out from, from one of the conversations built from the idea of living large uh, in Largo or to shorten that living Largo. Um, and it, it's, it's sort of the, the living theme uh, emphasizes the vibrancy of the area and the um, spectrum of colors you know, explored here is actually pulled from the branding materials from some of the larger institutions nearby. So it's sort of tying together the many little destinations within the overall area into, into one sort of brand. And this is, this is an initial concept that is explored in the strategy. So I'm gonna hand it over now to Adam Dobson. Thank you very much, Aaron. Yeah, really when it comes to placemaking, the first thing we wanted to do is to make sure we focused on what the outcome was, would be. So looking to repurpose underused spaces for public activity, reinforcing design goals, supporting design criteria for street types, open space and special locations, and then really building capacity by empowering people and organizations to shape public spaces, because it's not just about the work that we're doing. So um, looking at some of these placemaking moments, as we call them, we have those points of arrival in the major activity centers that would be landmark features. We have the gateway entrances into Largo, which are really the downtown thresholds with unique design features such as wayfinding and public art. We want to highlight architectural features, which are key locations where new buildings will connect to the streetscape. <clears throat> and we need to also look at our garages, particularly those, those multi-story garages with facades that face the public. And there are many of those in the Largo area. And finally, uh, places to locate public art, really iconic locations, uh, including the Beltway Bridges. Our approach is to look at a lot of the quick wins in Largo. So by this, we mean it has many opportunities to start its placemaking now by looking for sort of the lighter, quicker, cheaper approach. And those are the ideas that are signals of um, bigger things to come. So we can put in temporary testing of something without being the final structure. We can test the size and scale of something. We can certainly look to um, try out some pop-up public events in public spaces, and we can certainly to um, brighten up all of the street light columns with banners. Then moving into sort of what we're calling the Largo prototypes, uh, placemaking really improves visual appearance and activates the public realm by encouraging the community and government and commercial and institutional partners to really invest themselves in placemaking. So we're looking here at, um, you know, activating a metro plaza close to the metro station, hopefully linking with um, firms to be able to provide free Wi-Fi, but also thinking about this idea of Largo as a health center with the hospital there now and some new office buildings coming, medical office buildings, and looking at that kind of wellness program, whether it be sort of health trails and activities that you can do along those health trails, or even just you know looking at the activities that you can program in one of those public spaces. So to implement this, you know, we're going to have to make the case for placemaking. We're going to identify opportunities for projects as we are doing in this strategy, really cultivate future leadership for placemaking activities. We have to speak with uh, all of the um, residents in the area and all the different age groups because we need to make sure that there is fundamental buy-in from all of our partners. And then we can support demonstration projects. We can expand our partnerships, gain support from public agencies of which there are many in the area and their officials and really, you know, get the word out. And finally, when we've done all of this and we've done our temporary testing, we will evaluate those demonstration projects to help inform our future projects and some of those public realm policies and plans that we'll set in place. And finally, on this, this point, really, the implementation, it's going to be important to ensure consistency in policy. That's through our partner agencies so that we can support placemaking projects in Largo. And really, um, the final deliverable, this strategy itself, will be an implementable strategy with short, medium and long term goals that can be used by our agency partners, some of which you can see here uh, throughout the county, and it should be completed, the strategy should be completed by December 2021. None of the work we're doing is being done in a silo. Uh, it takes the cooperation and coordination of state and county agencies, plus private developers, and as I already said, those community stakeholders. So really all it remains for me to say is thank you very much for joining us on this journey today through the Largo Wayfinding, Branding and Placemaking Strategy and do visit our project website or email us to find out more. Thank you.